Okay, we're going to continue. Um, I'll continue on schedule now with the next 15 minute program we've got Eric Lindgren. Uh, he's going to be doing a thing called uh, winter on the front range. Eric Lindgren says mixing trained photography with weather is always my first choice. I love weather growing up in tornado alley with those Alberta clippers. I developed a strong respect for it. He says that re winter can rewrite, rewrite a common scene in a whole new way. Storms, rain, sunset, sunrise, and all the different components, uh, we can work to make our, our pictures stand out in the crowd. Eric says winter weather has uh, the biggest impact of change. His youth in Iowa in the winter was filled with winter sports and activities, and his employment was outdoors all year. When he re relocated to Colorado 25 years ago uh, and seeing what the uh, snow machine can do upslope, he said he was hooked. This was cool, literally, he says. So many variables are at play and due to the, uh, the climate in the, the high country, uh, a significant snowstorm can leave several feet on the ground and then me be nearly gone by midday with that glorious tree flock gone in no time. So this only adds to the challenge and the rarity a must to attempt to capture. Fraught with danger and beauty, this hobby can get the better of you fast. Disappointment is the nature of the game. When it works out, the image you will create will make your work stand out and set you apart from the rest. His lo local haunt, the Moffat Road, is a tough lady to please. She gets the better of him often. So with that, uh, we are going to uh, ask um, Eric Lindgren to unmute himself. And uh, on with your 15-minute program, let's give a warm Wisconsin chapter welcome to Eric Lindgren. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, let's see. I think I'm on. I think I'm unmuted. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here down here. Hopefully, it'll. Uh, I can head over here to my program and I can start it up. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching tonight, guys. Uh, this is my presentation. I apologize for my four-year-old. She might uh, inadvertently interrupt. So if you miss something I said, just speak up. Uh, anyway, uh, as Mike mentioned, I've been. Uh, somewhat of a rail fan for most of my life. And, and uh, where I used to live in Iowa was pretty quiet when it came to trains. Although nowadays I'm Daddy, wishing I, I would have taken, people? I'm just wishing that things were a bit, <clears throat> I wish things were, I wish I would have taken more photos at that time. Anyway, I'll move along. Uh, this is a little picture of myself. Uh, it kind of opens up the floor here to my, I'm, I'm gonna kind of just ad lib this as I move along. Uh, here's some photos of, the process I go through to when I when I do these things, uh, as I mentioned to somebody the other day, is fraught with danger. Uh, that's the only problem with this hobby is that you know I've become somewhat uh, skilled driver in the winter, and then also uh, uh, understanding some of the the nuances of the back roads and the mountains and how they change. Even on the when the sun comes out, the the ice from the previous storm will be on the gravel road below, and you'll have a foot of snow on top of it, and it's just like grease. If you don't have chains or studded tires, it's, uh, you know, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and I've had that happen a couple of times. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, uh, I'm, I did these photos in a sequence that kind of shows the, the storm as it starts out. Um, these things come down really, really fast and uh, ferocious uh, in a matter of, of an hour you can go from dry and no sign of any snow to a foot on everything and it's it's really astonishing but it also can uh get troubling too because it just comes up so fast and these are some photos here uh i'll try to explain a little bit as i go along in each one this one's a fairly easy one for me to get to I'm about five miles from here this is plain view which is very commonly photographed uh this is up at crescent uh this is an unfortunate day that turned into a disaster I got trapped up there because I drove into 27 inches that they had that winter that March spring uh, storm and uh, I was chasing this guy up the hill and uh, they were having the slide fences that were being tripped off by the falling snow from the branches on the trees and anyway I decided to venture up to Crescent and thankfully one of the local guys helped me get out of a mess I was in but uh, 
so I'll kind of move along in the gray skies. This is kind of a gray tone series. This is taken uh, just outside of El Dorado Canyon, uh, past Tunnel 18. And uh, this was on a UAV. Uh, this is a, a storm that we had a couple of weeks ago. It was a beautiful morning. And uh, this one was last spring. This is uh, South Boulder Creek uh, near Pine Cliff. And uh, I tried to capture the different layering you get uh, with the, the low uh, moisture filled clouds and how they just kind of start to pull up. It's, uh, the, the mountains act like a great big sponge or they act like a, like a block. And that's when I mentioned the upslope condition. This is a meteorological thing, but uh, it, uh, El Dorado Canyon is like a funnel that brings all this moisture and it hits the colder temperatures at the higher elevations and it just turns to snow. And at my house, I'll get three or four inches and in there they'll have, it's kind of similar to what happens in Norton uh, from what I, you know, from what I can tell, it's a mountain effect. But uh, this is uh, located at uh, Coal Creek Canyon and that's a westbound uh, train that's a daily. It's a, a train that runs between Denver and Provo, Utah, which is a great regular. It's a Burlington Northern Santa Fe train uh, that, you know, it's kind of surprising that the Union Pacific, you know, this is a UP line, but they, this train has a regular occurrence. I see this train more often than I do UP often. Uh, Amtrak is a daily. So that's always a nice bet when the weather looks good. You, you know, you're for the most time, you can count on Amtrak. So I do have a lot of Amtrak shots in snow and as a result, but it doesn't snow that often. Uh, but when it does, it really does. Uh, once again, this is also near uh, Plainview and Cole Creek Canyon. Uh, this is uh, uh, west of Rollinsville, and that's South Boulder Creek again, and uh, uh, makes for a real pretty scene uh, with a lot of, it changes, that this scene normally is very dark and uh, kind of subdued, and you end up finding, you know, if you do, like if you're a drone guy, you, you notice that, or if you climb the mountains, it's a sea of green with all those pines, so you end up looking for rock faces and things like that, and the snow just brings everything alive, it's, it has a, has a magical effect to it. Um, this is a, a classic spot that uh, we all know Mike Danum and he kind of started doing this shot and it's still alive, believe it or not. This was barely two weeks ago. So uh, it's getting crowded in, but the, the pole there is a part of the, uh, the PTC is called positive terrain control. Uh, they can't put it underground, the fiber optics because of the rock. So they, they have it strung on a pole uh, all along through the, uh, the flat irons. Uh, so it's kind of part of this part of the story, but um, here's another shot from Crescent uh, showing how, how lovely the snow can end up at your waist pretty quick in there. And uh, the only road that's open is the road grader that came through five minutes before you. And uh, it, you can't get turned around. It's like this little path. <laughs> so which adds to the fun. Uh, and this is uh, a shot taken um, uh, near uh, Crescent also. It's kind of a favorite spot uh, of a westbound uh, California Zephyr. And this is uh, uh, Cole Creek Canyon up on the hillside there uh, behind the, uh, just behind tunnel number one. And I'll keep moving along here. This is another, this is Blue Mountain uh, crossing and uh, in that blue hour. Blue hour and snow is a really, uh, has a very, you, you probably see it, you probably, you don't notice it till it's on you and it's, everything turns this incredible blue. And uh, it just, it's, it's astonishing. So you, you, know, you try to find a train when that happens and it doesn't happen often, but I've tried to capture it a little bit. <clears throat> I've been also trying to do this. I'm somewhat successful, but still working on it. Uh, this is the only train that came across on that day. It's number six, the eastbound California Zephyr. And this is tunnel one. And uh, I camped out right there and was hoping that the snow would get deep enough so that it would, uh, you know, bust open a drift right there. And I've been trying to do that, but uh, it's such a dynamic uh, climate. Uh, it changes so fast, it doesn't accumulate and stay. So uh, it's, it's all a timing thing. Uh, this is uh, out on the flat irons. This is between tunnel four and tunnel three. And uh, it's, it's kind of a neat way. And then this also kind of wraps up the gray skies and moving into when the sun starts to come out, which is a whole other thing. Uh, the, the entire mood just completely changes. Uh, in this particular scene here, the sun is just barely coming up from the, on the east. This is up behind Plainview. 
and there's a big turn up there. And this is the Grand Junction train. It's a manifest that runs between Grand Junction and Denver, sometimes one or two times a week, sometimes more often. Uh, and this is uh, also kind of an interesting story behind this picture. Uh, when I came out here, this is at Blue Mountain Crossing. Uh, when I drove out there, I was looking for fog shots and the fog we had that morning was uh, unbelievable. Uh, it was maybe 10 feet visibility. It was pretty nasty when I got up there and Amtrak was still down in Denver. It was about 40 minutes away. And uh, this train got to Rocky less than six track miles. The clouds literally just lifted. And within 10 minutes, the sun came out. It's, it, it's astonishing. I mean, it literally, the, the weather can change up there <laughs> in an instant. And uh, it just, yeah, I tried to capture it. It was even more dramatic earlier, but at least I got this. But, uh, and then when the sun's out, it's just like the whole valley turns on fire. It's like everything just uh, opens up. This is Crescent, classic shot, standing on a rock. Pretty easy to get to, really. Uh, the, the person owns this property adjacent to the track has been very cooperative. They don't have any issues with any of the rail fans yet. So <clears throat> some of us joke around about putting in bleachers right here, but uh, maybe in time we can work on that. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah, this is what I was hoping coming out of a tunnel. <laughs> so, and you guys in the Midwest, you get used to this. Uh, uh, you know, the sun, the, the snow piles up and it's great. You know, the plow comes through. It doesn't happen that often up there. So I was kind of lucky that with a friend of, friend and I worked this out uh, the, the plow went through and left a nice pile in front of the track about 15 minutes before number five got there. So it was kind of lucky. Uh, this is uh, uh, Coal Creek. Sun just came out. You can see the storm receding off onto the Great Plains. Uh, all the, the blues are really, uh, you get this blue and white dance going on. It's quite, it's just really astonishing. And the, the sun is uh, instantly warms your face when it comes out. Uh, this is up on top of the ridge over by tunnel number one, looking down in the valley with the clouds receding, uh, pulling away from the mountainsides. It just, it, you can just sit there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes and watch it happen. It's, and those same clouds will, will, as they say, we say skunk you too. That same cloud will go right in front of your train right when it comes by. It's quite frustrating. <laughs> We've got a lot of clunkers. Uh, this one I kept trying for years, uh, trying to get this guy for a long time. And uh, it finally happened uh, a couple of springs. This was, um, this was March of 21. So I guess it was last year, uh, looking at my list. Uh, this guy, you know, over and over again, trying to get the sun to come out and just punch right here. And uh, normally it's, you know, a little bit, I have some where it's really dark in the background and really light, you know, you get about five stops between the lights and darks. But in this case, it was very soft, it really worked out. Uh, this property immediately to the right of the train is now being developed. They're putting houses up there, which uh, it's happened. They broke ground about three months ago. So this shot's kind of ruined, unfortunately, unless you want to get a picture of a, of a new mansion right there, which is really sad. Um, this, is, <clears throat> this is located uh, east of East Portal. And this is the S-turn that comes around right there. And the, the peaks... Uh, this is a favorite spot. Um, that's the manifest train that's coming out of uh, Provo, which uh, uh, it's a hazmat train going west, from what I understand, and a manifest going east because it's uh, they're empties. But uh, I don't know the details on all that. I should probably try to figure that out. Uh, this is on the west side. Uh, this this shot here was uh, on my UAV, located uh, just west of Hot Sulphur Springs in. Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Byers Canyon, and it was just crazy luck, you know, with the storm we drove through, a friend and I were rail fanning and chasing this manifest uh, Grand Junction train up there, and uh, there were these snow squalls that were kind of like spotty, there were breaks in the system, and uh, I mean, I've done this chase, I don't know how many times, and this, this day it really worked out. Um, this is waiting for the right light. In the canyons, uh, the uh it's hard to find light in the winter because the sun so as you guys know is so low in the sky in the winter that a lot of the canyons are dark 
and so you you end up playing a game of hey the Amtrak's an hour and 20 minutes late today I can get a shot in light <laughs> so you end up running up there to get a shot and uh so you try to I'm all about chasing light but uh and this is you know November light uh for number five up on up on the crest there by tunnel one uh you know laying on a rock side there so you don't slip off but <laughs> When I bought a drone, it, my wife was very happy because I'm not going to fall, you know, fly the drone up there. But this was this one was still when I was walking up there. But uh, and this guy here, this is this is on a UAV, and uh, this is a very magical spot for me. This is between tunnel number eight and number seven, and uh, that's South Boulder Peak, which is off to the in the distance. And this is about 2,000 feet above the floor of the canyon of El Dorado Canyon. Colorado State Park. And uh, I walk a trailhead. Uh, it's called Fowler Trail, uh, which goes up on a thing called Goshawk Ridge. It takes about 45 minutes to hike it. And uh, I fly the drone from there. And, uh, and I, I've been working on this series, but I finally got this in full sun with flock on the trees and snow. It's, this, is, uh, this was a big, uh, big project. I'm glad I was able to get it done. I don't know if I'm able to do it again to I had a lot of intel on this train from a friend who works for the railroad and it was because it takes a lot of battery it's cold it was about 12 degrees and my uav is a pretty good one uh, at the time it was state of the art now we have a mavic 3 but uh it it was i was working the fringes on the technology to get this one to pull off two minutes so, eric two minutes thank you and what <clears throat> i think what i'll do is i'll run through here real quick and see if we can get through the rest. This is up uh, ski train. And uh, uh, this is uh, down on Pine Cliff. And uh, here's some more Amtrak. See if uh, now my computer froze. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is uh, west of uh, Pine Cliff, or excuse me, east at number 26. Uh, there's Coal Creek Canyon. And this is out on the flat irons near between tunnel number three and four. And this is plain view. If anybody wants me to slow down, give me a heads up. Uh, this is tunnel number three and four. This is a snowy morning up at tunnel three and four also. Uh, this is uh, uh, Toland, tunnel 29. Uh, this is on the west side that's uh, uh, coming through a uh, little Gore Canyon. I believe that might be a big Gore Canyon. I have to remember, look that, it's near Radium. Uh, this is uh, at East Portal. You can kind of see the valley, the, the flock on the trees up towards the divide as it comes down because the sun was warming up the trees. Uh, this is uh, Pine Cliff. Uh, this is uh, up at uh, near, whoops. Anyway, I can go back. Maybe for some reason my computer's seizing up. <clears throat> uh, but this particular shot is out near uh, Fort Morgan. Uh, just after sunrise in December. Whoops, now, now it's working. Uh, this is sunrise up at East Portal uh, with a westbound. I couldn't miss a warp on it. I was trying to capture the uh, Alpen glow. This is first light after snow at Pine Cliff. Uh, this is uh, Alpen glow up in the valley near Toland. Sunrise out at Bar Lake. This is where different lightning conditions can add to the, I'm uh, trying to move along. I'll try to ad lib as I go along here. Uh, <clears throat> come on, it's stuck. <laughs> there we go. Uh, whoa, anyway, uh, it's, I'm having some technical difficulties with my computer. Uh, this is uh, East Portal and the before sunrise down in the valley with an eastbound train and uh, that's too bad. I was hoping I could get through the rest of them here, but it's my uh, cursor has seized up and now it's gonna jump forward. So I apologize about that. Um, this is uh, near Toland with the uh, number six, the eastbound California's ever. This is ski train at Winter Park. Uh, this is uh, near tunnel 24 below Wonderview. This is down uh, along US 93, or it's east of 93 and just, just about the Indiana. That's out at uh, Hudson. And this is up near Toland. 
see if I can, there's still one more here. Some more of the different lighting effects you can get. This is that crescent and some blue hour. Uh, blue hour, uh, snow at sunrise. Let's see if, uh, no, <clears throat> I think that's the end. Anyway, this last frame here is from uh, 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 Gork. No, this is, yeah, this is, this is um, uh, Byers Canyon. So anyway, uh, we were just a real quick little show. I tried to keep it around 15 minutes. Uh, it's, uh, does, does anybody have any questions or anything? Did you want to let them, uh, uh, anybody have any questions? Yeah, if you if you do have questions, unmute yourself and 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 ask. Yeah. First of all, round of applause for Eric. Amazing images, Eric. Uh, Thanks. As ever. Uh, so, uh, does anybody here uh, want to say anything? Ask anything? Yeah, I'd like to strap myself to his vehicle so I can uh, ride along with him and get these great views and shots. Sure. Yeah, I'd love <laughs> to have company. <laughs> I Absolutely gotta... fantastic. Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm a meteorologist by trade and seeing these and understanding the weather and taking advantage of the weather is something I try to do in my train shots. And with you out in Colorado, I've never seen a, a, uh, a rail photographer take advantage of that like you have. So this is absolutely phenomenal. Well done, sir. Well, thanks very much. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of inspiration from uh, looking at photos uh, like from uh, well, I've always, I keep bringing up Mike Daneman because he lives near me and uh, he was doing this stuff in the 90s. I think he was gathering reference for his layout, but that's what he told me, but it really inspired me. And his, his stuff, as you know, is just really legendary. And uh, it, it was really a, a, a lot of, that's really what got me going at it. And I, I worked outside installing signage in the Midwest. So I, the weather doesn't bother me at all. I'm used to 20 below zero wind chill. <laughs> I've installed signs out in Mason City and Clear Lake. <laughs> oh boy. And, you know, and Albert Lee in that area in the middle of winter. And, and it's so it's, for me to be out in zero and it, it doesn't get that cold here. Uh, it can up in the high country, but it's never very long lived. It's not like it is back, you know, where you guys are. It's much colder there. But uh, it's, it, I, I kind of miss the cold. I kind of like the weather. But uh, it's, it's that probably why I do it is it, it's, it, it gets me out. Cause I kind of enjoy it. I'm not a real big fan of high heat. Like the Arizona rail fan guys, I, you know, I admire their work, but man, that's hot down there in the summer, <laughs> but it sure is cool. anybody else have any questions? Uh, how do you like the uh, Mavic three so far? I, have, I, don't have rail fan was one. I, I don't have one. My friend Tim does, I think. Uh, but I have a Mavic 2 Pro and also a Mavic Zoom. And, uh, but I, I tell you what, having 40 minutes of airtime would be really, really, really helpful. I can say that. I think that would, I haven't used one yet. Uh, but as soon as I can get my hands on one, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it a try. I, I, I'm under suspicion that there's a Mavic 3 Pro coming, which would be very helpful, I think, because a Mavic, because right now it's just a Mavic 3 and I suspect we're going to get a new model pretty soon so i'm kind yeah, of I, I, i'm flying just the original mavic right now so yeah it's, it's definitely on my upgrade list but i, I thought you said that you had one so i, I apologize oh, yeah i was just saying that with the mavic 3 coming out it well the four-third sensor is going to be really nice you know there'll be a lot of detail oh yeah yeah yep. very good anything else for eric before we move on in our program well, again, thank you, Eric, for uh, for putting that together. Um, looking at the sure. comments, uh, I'm sure you can uh, uh, right. see that there's plenty of compliments there. Uh, well deserved. Uh, well, thanks, guys. I, fantastic. It's an honor. Thank it's you. It's an honor to present to you. I, 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 it's nice to be. It's nice that you guys enjoy it. That's why I do it. You know. <laughs> it's like, it's Excellent. Fun. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll, we'll get you back another time. So, well, very good. Okay. Now we'll do another one sometime. Well, thank yeah. you, guys. Have yeah. a good night. Thank you. So um, again, um, this, uh, this, this meeting, uh, all of the meetings of the Wisconsin chapter NRHS are made possible by our members uh, and uh, dues. And if you're not yet a member, uh, it's real simple to become one. Uh, it's just, just go to www.nrhswis.org and click on the join and renew link. And uh, uh, it's as easy as that. Uh, speaking of which, um, Charlie Schultz is in the house. 
Charlie became a member today. So hat tip to you, Charlie. Uh, congratulations on being the newest member of the Wisconsin chapter NRHS.